Hey everyone. So recently I just upgraded my Maker Farm Prusa i3V from an 8 inch by 8 inch print bed to an 8 by 12 inch print bed. And now I want to do some more upgrades. Recently I've purchased some Ninja Flex and I tried to get Ninja Flex working on this printer. However, the default extruder setup here just does not work well with the uh, with the Ninja Flex. The filament is just way too flexible, and after it goes through the hub bolt, it just kind of coils up in the extruder bed um, or the extruder block instead of actually going through the hot end. So what I've done is I'm going to, or I just finished printing um, a new set of these extruder blocks. This is Wade's Accessible Extruder, or Greg's Accessible Extruder. And I want to drill out that hole and replace the hole with some uh, PTFE liner, so that after the filament gets pushed by the hob bolts, it has a smooth liner that will guide the flexible filament to the hot end. Um, and the purpose of this is I'm just going to be able to swap this out so I have a whole new uh, NEMA 17 motor, I have a whole new, all the hardware needed for this. I should just be able to unpl or unplug all of the motors and such, unscrew this, set this aside, and I should be able to put on this specialty extruder for flexible filaments. So here's the extruder block without any modifications. And you can see that the problem that happens with NinjaFlex with this extruder is if I zoom in this gap right here right between the idler bearing and the extruder block you see how there's that space right up in there that causes the uh, the ninja flex when it gets pushed by this hot bolt it tends to hit the bottom of the hot end here and then instead of being forced into the hot end it finds the path of least resistance which is actually that space and so as the guide bolt tries to push it in the ninja flex just starts coiling up into this circle and then eventually will pop out of that little hole right there so in order to show you guys i have some ninja flex here that i'm just going to insert into the hole and i'm going to close the idler and i'm going to show you what happens so I just have a little bit of pressure on the bottom here to kind of simulate the hot end. And you can see as I start to extrude, it's just coiling up into the extruder. And eventually, if I extrude enough, it just starts popping out that side just like that. So that's the problem. This is what I'm trying to prevent. So in order to solve that, I have this piece of Teflon tubing. This is a PTFE tubing. It's very low friction. It's actually what they use for Bowden systems. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill out this hole and I'm going to put a piece of tubing up in here that will hopefully fill that space inside there and act as a guide for the filament so that when it goes through the hob bolts, it'll just slide right through this tubing instead of being, uh, popping out of that open space there. So let's drill that out. So the outer diameter of the tubing is four millimeters. So I grabbed a 5 32nd inch drill bit, put it in the drill press and drilled out that hole. That way the hole is just big enough for the tubing to slide into. And after that is, I inserted the tubing and I marked where I need to cut it and then I just took an X-Acto knife and trimmed off that edge. I've inserted the liner that we cut. You can see that it's inserted into the extrusion hole. And if you look in the side, we see that it's nice and tight up against that idler bearing. And if I open it up, you can see that it just sits right inside there. So hopefully that will act as a guide for when it's going through the top bolts. It'll just go directly down that hole and it won't try to escape through the sides like we saw earlier. So let me grab some Ninja Flex and let's give it a try. So just like we did before, I have some Ninja Flex in there and I'm giving it a little bit of push. But as I turn this, there is absolutely no play. There's no give, which is perfect. That means that this should be able to push the filament directly into our hot end, and I don't have to worry about it popping out the sides or anything like that. So this will work exactly how I expected it to. So now all I have to do is throw a hot end on here and see if we can print something in NinjaFlex. So I have the new extruder in place and I have the NinjaFlex fed into it. So let's give this a try. I'm gonna extrude a little bit of NinjaFlex 
and we will see if anything comes out of the nozzle here. There we go, look at that. So I have Ninja Flex working on my machine. It's going to take some time to calibrate it and get an actual print going, but that means that this extruder block is capable of Ninja Flex. This is the scraps from the first little bit of extruding I did, and man, it feels so weird. It is really stretchy. This will be a very interesting material to play around with. This is just the scraps. Let's do something cooler with it. Well, would you look at what we have here? I have the extruder going, and more importantly, it's printing the first test print. So this is just a 20 millimeter calibration cube, but it's printing out of NinjaFlex, and it's going amazingly well for the first print here. So yes, this is NinjaFlex, using the extruder setup that we uh, did earlier. And the settings I'm using are the standard, it's printing at 210 degrees Celsius, and it's printing really slow. Um, the G-code is telling it to go at uh, 30 millimeters per second, but I have it up here set to only 80% uh, of the speed, because I thought even 30 millimeters was a little too fast for this. But you can see that it's printing pretty well for, you know, no calibration yet. I'll need to go and tweak some numbers to get the side smooth and everything, you know, working perfectly, but we have it printing, and I am, I am happy with this. So you can see that I've made one small change to the extruder since earlier. You can see that I now have this uh, blue gear, blue large gear, instead of the orange gear we were using earlier. Because I was having issues with it sticking, and I thought it was because the gear was not level. So I grabbed some of the, uh, the blue ones that I printed originally, but it turns out that um, the hardware that I bought, those uh, three washers on the inside, two of them were off-centered. They were not ground flat, they were kind of off-kilter. So that was causing the entire gear system to uh, turn to one side, to kind of be bent to one side. And that was causing misalignment problems and all kinds of things. So if you think that it may be your printed parts that's out of whack, it could also be your hardware, which I was surprised with. So I'm here with the second test prints. Uh, this is the same 20 millimeter cube that I printed before, but this one has no infill. It's just going to be a hollow box. Uh, it still has the two bottom layers as before, but I have it doing six top layers um, to try to get some bridging going and see if we can fill in that top a little bit. Uh, but this print is turning out really well. I'm surprised with how smooth the sides seem to be. But you can see that there's one corner which looks off, and that's the corner in which the z-axis height changes. So it stops there for a second to change the height, and then it just kind of oozes out of the nozzle. So oozing is going to be a really big problem with this Ninja Flex. So I'm going to have to kind of tweak the retraction settings and, you know, kind of calibrate my machine a little bit more in order to uh, get that oozing to not happen. But so far, I'm happy with the way that it's printing. And any second now, we'll start the, uh, the bridging process and try to fill in this top layer. And that'll be interesting because this material, I just have a feeling, will not bridge properly. It's just going to kind of sink in the inside. So I'd be surprised if I get any kind of a top surface on this cube. But we will find out right now. Uh, the first little bit worked pretty well. But yeah, as we get to these larger bridges, it's just, it's not quite spanning it. So we'll see if it catches up within the six top layers. But that actually worked a little better than I expected. So let's see how the, uh, the second one fares. Yep, about as well as I expected. So I'll let this finish and I'll come back. Okay, and here's the first actual test prints. This is my standard cuddling owls that I print all the time. And it's uh, turning out pretty well. I'm surprised that this Ninja Flex is able to capture the details. If you look at the, the feathers on the lower half of the body, um, you can see that there's actual feathers there, which I'm surprised with. Uh, so we'll see how the top of the heads turn out. Um, this Ninja Flex doesn't really deal well when it's uh, still warm and gooey. Um, so I'm going to have to put a fan on this thing to kind of cool down the Ninja Flex as it's printing. But uh, the lower bodies turned out really well. So I'm going to let this finish printing and then we will come back to see all of the finished objects. 
so here we go. Here are the results of my first Ninja Flex prints. I have two uh, the 20 millimeter cubes and our set of cuddling owls here. And this stuff is really flexible. So this is a 20 millimeter cube with no infill. And you can see that I can just deflect it as much as I want and it just bounces right back into shape. I am really impressed with this filament. And this one is again the 20 millimeter cube, but this has 20% infill, if you can see the, the honeycomb inside. And this makes it much more rigid. I can still, uh, I can still push on it and cause it to deform, but it's much harder to do so. So by controlling the amount of infill, you can control how much this thing flexes and the rigidity of it, which can be really useful uh, with some of my later prints. And then finally, I have our Cuddling Owls here. This is my standard test print. And I'm happy with the way that it shows detail. If I zoom in and see if I can get this thing to focus, uh, you can see that all of the detail from the model that you'd expect is here. All of the, the feathers on the bottom, um, all of the details of the ears on the top, even the little bit of a tail on the back. It all came through, even though that this is really like oozy filaments. So, and it's also, you know, flexible. I can sit here and I can push on it and cause it to flex and do all that. So Ninja Flex. It's a really interesting material with some really interesting properties. And uh, it took a little bit of work to get an extruder that could handle it. But I think it was worth the hassle. So this has been me uh, playing with the Ninja Flex. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, be sure to like the video if you liked the video. And let me know in the comments below if you've played with Ninja Flex. And also give me ideas for things to print with it. You know, I have a few ideas floating in my head, but I'm sure that you've found some uh, awesome models that would be great to see in using this flexible Ninja Flex. So leave those models, those suggestions, down in the comments below. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching Hoffman Engineering.